The Dreamcast is a very underrated console that became home to many fantastic titles and even some movie inspired entries. While there aren't as many of these titles available on the system compared to Sega's previous consoles, they are still worth looking into to round off this series of movie inspired games. If you haven't watched any of the previous videos then be sure to go and check them out, but here we will be venturing forward to look at the movie inspired adaptions of the Sega Dreamcast. Evil Dead Hail to the King is a survival horror video game developed by Heavy Iron Studios and published by THQ in the year 2000. The game would be released for the Dreamcast, PlayStation and Microsoft Windows, which acts as a sequel to the 1992 film Army of Darkness. The game would also play like an early Resident Evil game, containing similar features such as pre-rendered backgrounds and fixed camera angles, as well as limited ammunition and resources to find as you travel. The player controls the character by using the D-pad or analog stick to move left or right or rotate the character while also interacting with the many elements seen within the environments and the player will also face many enemies including the deadites, animated skeletons, possessed hillbillies and wolverine scouts but the premise of the game takes place 8 years after the events of Army of Darkness returning to the old cabin to help Ash face his demons shortly after arriving Ash's possessed severed hand appears and plays Professor Noby's old cassette containing the Necronomicon's incantation once again despite attempts to stop it, the evil once again awakens in the woods, smashing through the window of the cabin and kidnapping Ash's girlfriend Jenny. Ash will need to find the missing pages of the Necronomicon on his travels while dealing with the hordes of deadites that appear at every location while trying to save his girlfriend. The PlayStation version of Evil Dead Hail to the King received mixed reviews while the Dreamcast and PC versions received generally unfavourable reviews, stating that the Dreamcast version's graphics were slightly better than the PlayStation but still suffered from the same clunky controls and high level of difficulty. But the game did make great use of its dark, atmosphere and rich setting, but the relentless spawning of enemies restricted the tension building elements, as more enemies would constantly appear mere seconds after being defeated, which only added to the difficulty. Godzilla Generations is an action game developed by General Entertainment and published by Sega for the Dreamcast in 1998. It was exclusively released in Japan as one of the system's four launch titles. The game is based on the Godzilla franchise and involves the player controlling various giant monsters in an attempt to destroy real life Japanese cities. You move the monsters around large maps filled with buildings and environmental elements where you rack up points for all the destruction you cause and you have to contend with attacks from the military who will use explosives and other weapons to inflict damage. Godzilla Generations mainly received lukewarm reviews from Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu and a very negative response from Western journalists, despite fans showing interest in the game at the 1998 Tokyo Game Show. The gameplay is slow and the controls are clunky and sluggish, which may become frustrating for some players looking for a more fluid experience. A sequel with Godzilla Generations Maximum Impact was released later in Japan in 1999.
Godzilla Generations Maximum Impact was developed by General Entertainment and published by Sega for the Dreamcast in 1999, exclusively in Japan. The game is split into a variety of different levels in which Godzilla stomps forward through a city while he has to shoot enemies moving in a linear format with later levels allowing for more freedom of movement with the addition of one on one boss encounters in some of the levels. Godzilla in this version is the only playable character known in the game, but like its predecessor, Maximum Impact wasn't well received even though the game displayed more variety and better visuals, the sluggish gameplay was still found to be a frustrating element for most players. Taxi 2 is a driving game based on the movie of the same name, releasing in 2000 which features two game modes, a story mode that follows scenes from the movie itself that allows you to select from a variety of different missions. When a mission is completed you can save your progress but you can also unlock a playable version within the arcade mode. In the story mode itself though you will have to watch the temperature gauge as the engine will explode if you use speed boosts for prolonged periods, but this feature is removed from the arcade mode. The game also released on the Sony Playstation and honestly there is very little difference regarding the gameplay and visuals, although the Dreamcast version looks slightly better with smoother graphics, but for most playing the game for the first time, many will think that it is just from the PS1 itself. Not the best movie adaption or driving game on the Dreamcast, but will appeal to players in short bursts. Star Wars Demolition is a vehicular combat game set within the Star Wars universe, created by Luxoflux and LucasArts, seeing a release on both the Dreamcast and Sony Playstation in the year 2000. The premise of the game is that the Galactic Empire have banned Jabba the Hutt's pod races, so Jabba creates a more life-threatening vehicular combat contest. The objective is to be the last vehicle standing by destroying all other combatants. Several power-ups can be found on the battlefield which enhance the player's vehicle and abilities. There are 8 playable stages with 13 combatants which are included in the game with 4 playable game modes that are offered to players including tournament and battle modes, seeing players compete in successfully harder and more difficult rounds as you progress. You will need to progress through the game however to unlock each of the arenas and characters that are available. Each mode can be played with 1 or 2 players on the Playstation while the Dreamcast version can support up to 4 players. The game did receive mixed reviews upon its release with critics feeling that the game, while fun in short bursts, would lose its appeal with more extended gameplay. Disney's Dinosaur is an action adventure game published by Ubisoft in 2000 and functions as a tie into the Disney film of the same name. The game loosely follows the story of the film playing from a top down perspective as the main dinosaur character along with the help of his friends to flee to the mainland where they encounter many other dinosaurs on a fight for survival. To complete each level you will need to use teamwork utilising all of the playable characters abilities 
to complete various objectives to proceed and unlock new areas to explore. The Dreamcast version received mixed reviews, while the PlayStation version received unfavourable reviews, although it was seen to be better than most movie tie-ins, but still not a very compelling game overall. However, fans of the movie will still enjoy the game, and if you enjoyed other dinosaur games, like the Jurassic Park series, then this will be a decent alternative. Based on the movie of the same name, 102 Dalmatians puts you in the role of two puppies from the large Dalmatian family that have once again been kidnapped by the evil Cruella de Vil, having reprogrammed the toys built in her factory to steal the puppies. You play as both Oddball and Domino on a quest to rescue the other puppies that will take you through many locations from parks to city streets and alleyways to Cruella's factory while collecting items, pickups, resources and solving puzzles to unlock new areas and secrets to explore. The game will have Having cartoon visuals from the offset is more reflective of early graphic scene on the PS1 which was also released in the same year. You also have access to a selection of mini games to play from a memory game digging up and matching items in a garden to a mini golf game with more being made accessible by unlocking levels or completing the main story missions. The game did receive mixed reviews at its launch but was praised for its voice acting. It's a pretty straightforward and simplistic game that is more likely to appeal to players of a younger generation. Toy Story 2 Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue is a 1999 platform game developed by Traveller's Tales and published by Activision and Disney Interactive. The game is based on the Disney Pixar's 1999 animated film, which would also get a release on the Nintendo 64, and PlayStation, Microsoft, Windows PC and other systems along with the Dreamcast in the year 2000. The console versions would put the player in control of Buzz Lightyear as he goes across 15 different levels that mix between main levels and boss events that are based and inspired by locations from the film in order to rescue Woody. Each level presents different tasks and objectives to complete while hunting items and collectibles to unlock more secrets, but also to unlock the next stage. Buzz can attack enemies with a wrist laser, which can be charged up for additional power and can also be aimed through a first person viewpoint. He will also have additional features with a spin attack and also being able to extend his wings to perform double jumps and a foot stomp to activate switches. The PlayStation version of Toy Story 2 received positive reviews of its time, while the Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast versions received mixed or average reviews, often being criticised for its awkward camera layout and the limited number of repetitive phrases used by non-playable characters throughout the game. Still, if you are a fan of Toy Story 2, this game will definitely appeal to those players of a younger generation generation.
Buzz Lightyear of Star Command is based on the animated television series produced by Walt Disney and Pixar Studios, releasing between 2000 and 2001 for the Dreamcast, PlayStation, Windows PC and Game Boy Color. It serves as an actual spin-off to the Toy Story franchise and presents a fictionalized account of the character Buzz Lightyear. The game is set within the future where Buzz is part of a galactic alliance, a peaceful union of various planets that are home to various alien species that can coexist in harmony. Star Command is a piece keeping organization consisting of space rangers who investigate threats to galactic peace. Once this alliance is threatened it is up to Buzz and his team to put an end to the chaos which will take him on a quest to explore many environments based on earth, other planets and in space itself where you will need to defeat enemies and solve puzzles, collect items and resources to aid in your progression to reach the next stage. The game was met with mixed reviews with many arguments being around the camera and control systems as they were seen to be poor in quality. Still the game has its appeal and is a very good alternative to Toy Story 2, which also released on the console. Jedi Power Battles is another episodic game from the Star Wars Episode 1 series, which plays as an action video game set during the same time frame as the movie The Phantom Menace. The game was first and originally released on the Dreamcast, later with the PlayStation and the Game Boy Advance, that would become a mix of an action platform game and beat em up. Players can choose from one of five Jedi to run, jump, slash and use the force through the game's levels, with the primary weapon being a lightsaber to fight through waves of enemies and deflect blaster shots. The lightsaber combat is rather simplified with a system that lets the player lock onto the nearest enemy while using special attacks to defeat more powerful enemies. There are a few segments in which the player can pilot various craft and the campaign can also be played in cooperative mode with a second player, with the Dreamcast version having additional training modes and a two player duel mode. As players progress, additional lightsaber combos and special powers can be unlocked. The Dreamcast version received generally favourable reviews but were critical of the game's high difficulty while also praising the game's cooperative mode. Star Wars Episode 1 Racer is a 1999 racing game based on the pod racing sequence from the film Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace. The game features all of the racers and race courses from The Phantom Menace while adding several new courses on various planets. It has several single player modes including a tournament mode along with a multiplayer mode to play as some of your favourite characters from the movie itself. The game received generally positive reviews among its critics that saw it as a great alternative to games like Wipeout and F-Zero. Two sequels were later released with both Star Wars The Arcade Racer and Star Wars Racer Revenge that released in 2002 on the PlayStation 2. It is a solid fun racer that is challenging yet very rewarding and is a great addition to the lineup of iconic Star Wars games. The list of games presented here provide interesting scenarios with different situations and gameplay mechanics, although some of these games probably aren't considered as the best of these movie adaptions, but would have appealed to a select few players over the years. Still, they present a unique take on the video games of the time, while also showing how underrated the Dreamcast console truly is, that has some incredible games that are worth exploring, which is why we need to check out this next video that will look even further into many of the titles of this interesting console. <laughs> 